Oh man, that Oh woo! my goodness. Woo! Oh my <laughs> gosh. I <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Lobster and Beer TV. I'm your host, Brian Thompson. Today's guest is the queen of barbecue. She's had over 35 years of culinary expertise that have led her to winning over 200 competitions, including being the first woman ever to become the state of Georgia's barbecue champion and world, world. champion. Woo! Woo! She volunteers at the local culinary school, teaching and inspiring students in various culinary classes. She has also cooked over 43,000 meals alone, single-handedly for Meals on Wheels of Coetta. Her motto is, you have to give back to your community, and there is no better way for me than to feed people in need. I love that so much. Aww. So ladies and gentlemen, coming to us live from Noonan, Georgia with a lobster and a beer. Chef Tina Turner. Tina. Woo! Hey y'all. Hello. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm just sitting here in my kitchen ready to pop this beer. Let's pop it. <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you pop mine? Yeah. Oh good. We can pop. Let's yeah, do let's do it. And let's I always it. drink with a straw, but I won't. Drink beer with a straw? Sometimes it messes your lipstick up. So if you have a straw, it does not. That's a true queen. But I'll be of the... one of the boys today and I'll just That's check it. That's a true it queen of the South move right there. I mean, hey, you can you can bring you you can maybe teach us a thing or two so we look better for our show, you know? <laughs> hey, cheers. cheers it's uh, to it's Tina. an honor to have you on the show, Chef Tina. Thank you, Chef Tina. Woo! Yes. Woohoo! Let's try this. Oh. Have you had this before? The um uh, the Abita mm. Purple Haze? No. That's different. Yeah, it's very uh, No, different. I like I thought, it. I thought it was going to honestly have more raspberry flavor to it, but it's good. It's, it's on good. the back end. Yeah. I get the raspberry on kind of on the back end, not the front end. I get refreshing on the front end and like lingering like raspberry on the back. Yeah. It feels a not... little more like a seltzer. Like it's got like a little, mm -hmm. little like a, a seltzer taste to it, but it's a lager beer. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. Honestly, it's not what I expected. Yeah, it starts like it's a seltzer, but you look at it, say so you I have mine in the can, but it, it looks it, it looks like beer. Yeah. It has beer, it has some beer flavor. Yeah. It's but it starts too. out the feel of a seltzer. Yeah. Would you consider yourself a beer drinker? Yeah. Yeah. What are some of your go-tos? You're gonna laugh. <laughs> you're laughing before i told you what? i laugh, you know because i can't i'm not i'm a lightweight so uh, y'all probably don't even know what these are because y'all are so young uh they're ponies by miller they're little bitty yeah the little Googling. ones like the ones on uh airplanes but they're in a bottle googling yeah yeah the little mini bottles. miller oh, High yes. Life. i've seen no i've seen those miller high life ponies i love those the high life the champagne of beer that's right. <laughs> I love that. That's that that would that's probably a, that's be a fitting, my, my favorite. That's a yeah. fitting beer for you. I mean, that's a, the high life. I mean, you got the queen of the South here, queen of barbecue. That's queen only of the South, fitting. Drinking the high life yeah, that, makes <laughs> sense. So sp speaking on that, this, uh, Tina, this is a special episode for us because you are actually the first chef and culinary expert that we've had on the show. And obviously we're called lobster and beer. So the lobster role is a big part of this show and now to bring a chef on and have you add your special touch to this role tell us what you did here i'm so excited to try it oh well you want to take a look at it here yeah <laughs> now i have already eaten one but i didn't eat the whole thing i split one with my mom so it's pretty big you know did it get your mom's but, approval uh yeah if i'd have had more lot she probably would have tried to take this one home and it's <laughs> Mm. So, you know, I I grill toasted my bun, but I put the lobster 
on my egg, my big green egg, and I I butter poached it with some of my seasoning. I sent y'all some of this, so and um, I butter poached it, and then pulled it out and put it right in my toasted bun. Well, this has brie cheese in it because I love the creaminess of brie. I hate mayonnaise. That's weird for a southerner, I know. <laughs> and then it's got bacon, and that is very southern. You got to have some bacon. So the decadence of some very good, this is a high quality bacon by, I don't know if you've ever heard of Compart Duroc. It's no, a heritage never, breed hog yeah. by, called a Duroc. So I've used some of the finest bacon with some of the finest lobster <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> and I some of it. the let's, finest brie cheese. <laughs> yes, I love it. Let's uh, Let's dig in and try it out. I really wanted to see video of y'all making it. Yeah, I would. Of us making it? I would have probably put you, put, put, you would have put us to shame. You would have been laughing at us <laughs> Here, yeah, let me you... see yours. Hold it up. It mm. doesn't even look close to what yours is. That's little. Yeah. You got we... to make, yeah. You gotta make a big one. Yeah, we we, we, we did not get the, 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 the foot long memo, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> as big as her forearm. There, now that's, that's a lot. Did you, right did you end there. up being able to convince the Vietnamese restaurant to get you the 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 roll? Well, the the first ones I sent you was on one kind of bread, and you'll see this one is on a Vietnamese baguette. Hmm. And I'm, I'm, you know, where you're from, I don't know if y'all have access to that. I yeah, kind of no. live in the boonies, but we do have a Vietnamese restaurant. So I convinced them to sell me some. The only thing really different, it's like a great French bread, you know, crispy on the outside, but the inside, because it's made with rice flour, uh, I don't know the the term that I would use would be the crumb of it, but it's it's like <laughs> perfect and soft. So yeah. and I like the crunch on the outside and then that softness on the inside with yeah. it's like perfect with mm. great lobster, great bacon and beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, it, it's, it's a amazing. good pairing. It is actually, it does go well with it. Yeah. The, the lightness of this beer really complements mm -hmm. it. I think what's doing it for me, honestly, is this seasoning, Tina, Chef Tina, sorry, is incredible. Thank you. We, I popped this open. Uh, I made, I made grilled cheeses last Yes. Night, and I just <laughs> threw it on the butter on the pan. And then toasted it. Oh my goodness, man. It was, I love making grilled cheese, especially if I've had a few beers. How did you come up with this seasoning? What was the process? Tell us all about it. I'm, I'm super interested because I, I really do well, love it. The flavor profile, if you, I don't know if you watch the Netflix show, is the seasoning that I mixed up to put on the beef ribs. Oh. But I had to make it from scratch. So then I got in the plan of developing it to, you know, I make it at home and I've added it to things for years. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, I'm going to just go into production and I donate the the profits to Meals on Wheels. So it really wasn't for oh. a profit thing for me, but, you know, just to kind of spread it. Because if you've tried it on grilled cheese, now you've tried it on lobster. It doesn't taste the same. No. At yeah. all, does it? No, not at all. And that, that is what I think is the most interesting thing about this because, you know, people will get in a rut and they, or they find some kind of seasoning or rub they love and they use it on everything yeah. and the family gets burnt out yeah. <laughs> or yeah. whoever you're cooking for. It, it, for some reason, the nuances in it picks up like on venison. I had a friend of mine just put it on some venison. Um, I, you know, it says from alligator to venison on it. Yeah, so, yeah. and my mom was just here and we had the lobster rolls and, um, she said, you know, last night we cooked some asparagus on the grill and foil with butter and we put some in there. She said, the best asparagus I ever had. Now my mom, <laughs> she's not one to hand out compliments unless they're true. Uh, okay. so, yeah. so I thought that was really sweet. So it doesn't, you can use it literally on three different things like your mashed potatoes, your pork chops, which on my YouTube channel, I did uh, some pork chops the other day uh, and put it on your vet and it does not taste the same. It does not taste the same. So it, if it's something I have cooked with for a long time, but yeah. just decided to produce it 
after the Netflix show, I had so many people ask me, what is that you put on the ribs? And I thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and, and develop it. And I got a Texas blends it for me. Um, I tried to look here in Georgia to find, and they just couldn't get it right. Sometimes yeah. when you multiply a recipe, it doesn't taste the same. Yeah. So it took a while to go back and forth, mailing back and forth to taste it, to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, to go all the way back of when I started developing it years ago, I lived in Europe when I was in culinary school. And I remember when I first arrived there, they have, you know, herb shops and spice shops and flower shops and meat shops and bread shops, different than the mass grocery stores here. I remember walking in, in this village that had a, a herb and spice, and I don't mean herb like some people mean, I meant really <laughs> herbs and spices. And it was like this smell that hit me. And it reminds me, if you open up your bottle, I got one right here. It just, it really takes, I mean, I was 18 years old, you know, now I'm yeah, pushing <sighs> hold on, 60. Hold on. So back. Back. it reminds me of that. Oh, and so, um, so good. it obviously works on beef ribs because uh, on there, they said it was the best rib, beef ribs it ever had. So. <laughs> yeah. When we, when we first got it, before we even tried it the other day, uh, we just opened mm -hmm. it to smell it. And I, he saw it on my face. I was like, oh my gosh, dude, this is incredible. And immediately he goes, after the show, we're splitting it up half and half. You get a bag, I get a bag. I was like, okay, okay. okay. I tell you, it's great in butter. I make shrimp scampi with it. You know, yeah. I make, you know, bread, to dip Oof. bread in. But isn't it a perfect compliment for lobster? It is like this. Yeah, I, I purposely doused mine in the seasoning too. And it mm -hmm. is so good. I love it. I'm loving yeah, it. Yeah, I put it in butter on my grill and, yeah. you know, let it, the flavor bloom. And then I just put the lobster pieces in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, uh, you know, you can do this in the oven or on the stove. You know, I just, we had a sunny day. It's been raining here a lot. I don't care if it's 32 degrees out. I went out and just went ahead and did it on the grill. because It's rained every day until today. Oh, goodness. Because that's why I told you, oh, gosh, I might have to do it in the house. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it turned out beautiful today. Yeah. I, don't, I got my blinds kind of closed in the back, but it's sunshiny. Ah, that's nice. How can people find this and purchase it? Our viewers who are watching after this conversation, people are probably drooling right oh, now. Oh, yeah. I already know. Um, <laughs> where, where can they find this? Can you order it online? You can get it at my website at tinacanningcooks.com. Yeah. Um, and if you do own a store or shop that would like to carry it, you can reach me on my website and I will make sure you get hooked up. I love that. And the other thing I want to talk about, too, which honestly it the most impressed like you you you've had an illustrious career as a chef and you've done some incredible things obviously you've won so many competitions extremely successful but one of the things that i've seen as a backbone in your career is your your drive for philanthropy and you mentioned with the seasoning that uh, a portion of the profits go to meals on wheels uh, there's difference in a portion and the profits. The, the <laughs> profits go to, that's incredible. Uh, so so yeah. what blows my mind with that, Chef Tina, is you could have tried to flip a quick buck with the Netflix show and sold this to make money, but you decided to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Thank you, by the way. Cheers to that. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Yeah, cheers to that. That's incredible. Like we have... We um we make T-shirts for the show and we collaborate with the guest and look at that I love that also available <laughs> I'm assuming on your website your T-shirts yeah are those oh yeah they're yeah. on there and the profits also go to Mills on do they really okay we got to order two of those. <laughs> let's do it yeah. yeah it's Mills on Wheels of Coweta where's is that in your area of Georgia yes I that's the county that I live in okay and uh you know I uh. My mom used to deliver for Meals on Wheels. I don't know if you're familiar with what it is, but it um, they deliver meals. And uh, every day we would deliver seven days a week to home bell elderly people that can't shop or cook for themselves. So I cook lots of meals. Like I'll go tomorrow and probably cook about mm, 500 meals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> tomorrow. So, just tomorrow, uh, and I do that minutes. alone. It just has always been in the back of my head and then doing competition barbecue. I know how does that mix up? But it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was balling. I was uh, donating all of my call meat that I didn't want to compete with or my cooked meat. I mean, what are you going to do with all that? I you love know? that. Um, because a lot of people will cook 20 something chicken legs for a contest and they probably bought 60 to sort through. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of, of waste and I don't like to waste food. And I started donating to Meals on Bills. And then I received a, a message, an email from the director, uh, one of the directors there and said, hey, do you know anybody that could help us cook? And I wrote back, well, what about me? And literally my phone rang before I could walk through the house. And I started the next day. That's incredible. The fact that you. Yeah, and that was a few years ago. So. Really? You know, I'm happy. I never have a day that I don't want to be there because I know that I'm helping other people. That's inspiring for me. And that yeah. that attitude is such a beautiful thing, especially for our our viewers to to hear that and understand. Because I think a piece of it, too, which you, you probably agree with me on this is, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, we, we have no no idea how long we're here for. But when <laughs> at the end of the day, when they're about to pull the plug on Brian. I want to look back and know that I left the world a better place than I found it. And I did right. more giving for people. Cause at the end of the day, it's like, if you're just going to like you, you, like I mentioned earlier, you, you had a huge opportunity to, to capitalize on your, you know, your fame through Netflix and all the competitions you've won, but instead you've decided to give back, which that's, that's very rare. It's very, very rare, and it's extremely commendable. And I think it's so important for people to hear this side of the story because it's inspiring, and and more people like it's it's more fulfilling, would you say, than anything else? Yeah, it tr it truly is. I mean, you know, when I I don't get to meet our clients directly, and I'm glad about that. I know that sounds terrible. I would get too attached. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, you know, people pass, most of our people, you know, our elder health conditions. So it, it lets me help people. It is directly, but I don't have to physically, you know, go. Yeah. I know that sounds terrible, but I don't think that I could be like a delivery driver. Yeah. I will, I, if something happened to them, I, I would be not functional. It'd be like being a nurse or a doctor or a veterinarian. Yeah. I can't, I can't touch it directly. Yeah. I have to be behind the scenes a little bit <laughs> that makes it, sense, it makes yeah. me feel better because I, I have to save myself emotionally too or I couldn't be able to do it yeah of course yeah. you know when I won world food I don't know if you know ten thousand dollars of my winning went to Meals on Wheels no way are you serious no yeah 100 percent. so yeah and then um and then I took my husband to Disney when I won another TV show on that <laughs> night. <laughs> You'll oh, be able yeah. to see me next spring on a different network. So Ooh. I'm hoping that that gives a bump in my sales, um, you know, because so, it allow me to, to you know, give more money. Yeah, so, of course. I don't hopefully. Want you to get... it, they told me spring. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't awesome. want you to get in trouble. I don't know if you can say, is it going to be like a competition type show again? It's, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Awesome. All right, the pearls are going to be back on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's yes, go back. they will. I want to. Uh, I want to hear about the 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 world competition. What was that like? What was it like going into it? And you know, was that the was it your first time competing the year you won? No, no, I competed in the World Food Championships. I think a, two two or three times before that. And luckily, if, you know, I placed each time. Yeah. I think uh, one time I was third, fourth, then third. And then the next time I won. So, you know, it worked out pretty good. Where, <laughs> so, the, you know, the, the you numbers won. stayed well, you know. Yeah, the year you won, where was it held? That year it was in um, Orange Beach. Orange Beach. Was that Florida, or Alabama? Anyway, <laughs> Orange Beach, Alabama, and then now it's in Dallas, Texas. But you know, I'm gonna. That's a long drive with your barbecue rig. You know, you have oh, to so take. A lot you have of to time. bring your own. But you know, I'm going out on top, so I'm. I'm. I think I'm moving on to try that. some other stuff. I love that. Yep. When I won the Georgia championships, the first woman to win it. Uh, <laughs> you know, 
I worked hard for that and to gain that respect because it's, it's, you know, it's a man's world. That's how it is, you know, but what's really cool is the very next year, another woman won. Oh, wow. no way. That's awesome. So you paved the but way. The thing is, I told her I'll always be the first one. <laughs> yes, <she will. laughs> Absolutely. I love that. Did you find it at all hard in that, you know, quote unquote man's world? Were they, were they receptive to you? Did they give you, did they, you know, kind of give you a hard time? I don't think anybody gave me a hard time. I got ignored, I think. Yeah. But, you know, just think about it. If you were the only guys walking into, you know, a hen party, you know, it, y'all probably are not going to talk because I mean, what? You know, you don't know, you know, yeah. and I've worked in a man's field, you know, almost my entire life. So it wasn't a big deal. I mean, now, you know, it's not, you know, there's still some of those, good old boys, you know, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, so, wait, wait, that's still what? Still what? <laughs> it, it, it's still, you know, don't talk to me. And, yeah, they're you know, I'm, I'm well, yeah, they're, scared, they're scared to be around the champ. You know, it's awkward because it, it is a men's sport. It really yeah. is. It still is. I mean, I don't know hardly any women that you know, do all the grilling and all that at home. It's just, it's just the way it is. I don't worry about it. It's kind of funny now that, you know, now I'm seem like I'm one of the guys. So <laughs> to most people, so I, you know, it's cool with me. Maybe it will inspire more women to go. I mean, cause you know, if you like to be around lots of men, it's a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now when my husband watches this, I don't know. <laughs> Hey, we, we can take this part out in, in editing. If, uh... Oh, you know, he's probably used to be saying crap, but, but he, he might go, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, so let's, uh, I want to, you touched on it a little bit, but let's dive into the, the Netflix show, American Barbecue Show. Yeah. Uh, wh what was that like? You know, like how, how, how one, I, I'm curious, like how long it lasted, um, how you ended up getting on the show and then being on the show, like what, what was your experience? Well, how I got chose for the show is I got contacted on Facebook. Somebody messaged me and I thought it was a joke, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't answer. And then I got <laughs> another message, you know, and I thought, and then I don't know how they got my number, called me. And I said, well, you're going to have to call me from a landline because, you know, I didn't, you know, it's it didn't tell me who, you know, who it was. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it took me a while to believe them. And I thought, well, you know, I did a TV show back in 2014 on Travel Channel. So I thought, okay, I know what it entails, right? Yeah. Uh, no, that, <laughs> the show on Travel Channel was like nothing compared to this. It, that was like four rounds. This, we were, you know, gone somewhere else. They whisked me. They picked me up, took me a long <laughs> way away from home. And um, it was 21 days. Oof. Oh, wow. And um it was a lot harder to me, honestly, than what the the show shared. Yeah. Because it was, uh, I'm a low and slow cook. If you watch any of my videos, you know, I cook at like 235. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in 250 if I'm cooking a hog. But um, yeah. Yeah, it was the time that management was the hardest. And then they, they don't show the inner dynamics of, of the everybody on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they kind of show you what they want to show because yeah. all of us were experienced cooks, but that made it out like that we were not, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I guess they edit that out. You know, all of us were experienced. How would they have found us? Exactly. Right? No, exactly. Yeah. And would they walk in in Kroger and go, Hey, you No, doesn't work that way. So, so they may just seem like we were inexperienced, but. I had not cooked on a lot of those type of cookers. That was honest. Yeah. Um, now I can cook on all of them. So I think it really taught me a lot because I kind of was in my niche just to cook on like either this or that, you know? Yeah. You know? So it was, a, uh, you know, I'd cooked on pellet cookers for a while, but that particular one we had was very different. And uh, I'm surprised I won that. And that one was on lobster. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That, that, you we were so scared. You were so scared to kill the live lobsters. <laughs> uh, oh, y'all. And then Mark sent me some a few months ago. Yeah. Shout out Mark I, from Get Main Lobster. Yeah. Yes, he did. He sent me, and I did not know <laughs> that he was going to send me live ones. 
and I was pulling out the meat on a video. It was on. It was a ridiculously long that didn't I watched get that a lot video. of views. It was hilarious. You were in your kitchen and but, you started freaking out. You yeah. couldn't. You couldn't even take it out of the box. <laughs> no, it was y'all. And you know, I can cook anything. I mean, I cooked iguana for God's sake, yeah. but uh, I don't want to have to. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. You know, I can go to Kroger. <laughs> yeah. You know, or Publix or whatever. You know, I I don't want to do that part, even though. I did it. It tasted great. I mean, you know, he sent me, luckily, a lobster tail, Mark did, but it's like huge. <laughs> if I could get up and go to the freezer and get, you would not, I've never seen what, I mean, it's like this <laughs> again, the whole tail, just the tail. Yeah. So I'm saving that. I think I'm going to cook it for Valentine's Day. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I think go. I'm going to save it for Valentine's Day. <laughs> I like so that. So I'm trying to think what else. Oh, it took 21 days. The competitions were uh, usually a day long, right? You had a day or oh yeah. So then, but filming takes even longer than yeah. that five and a half hours. You know, if anybody had any sense, they would say they gave them five and a half hours to cook. It's now nighttime. You know, yeah. filming yeah. they have to stop takes, and there's a lot, a lot going on. And they edited quite a bit out. Now I think a lot of that was due to COVID because it didn't come out for a year. Yeah, uh, you know, because it their union. And, you know, they closed down, so there was no editing or anything like that. But um, I think that the country, you know, whatever you feel on this, needed some unity. So I think that they edited it to show that we were a little closer than, you know, yeah. what what actually is. Uh, uh, yeah. Even though everybody was nice, I knew Grubbs and I knew Sylvie prior because I had competed against Sylvie in World Food. Yeah, yeah. And one each time. See, yeah, yeah, I could tell you guys were close. <laughs> yeah. And one. Yeah, I could well, tell. I, could, I was going to And ask. then Grubbs was an alternate. They have an alternate always when you film a show in case somebody, you know, bugs out or something, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Grubbs was my alternate when I filmed the show on uh, Travel Channel. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's how I met him in 2014. And he and I have stayed in touch. Oh, I love and that. he yeah. he was not that is him on the show what you see is what you get so, yeah, yeah I love that. Yeah. yeah and I think I think I am too and Sylvie too I mean you know we're just you know what you see it is you know <laughs> yeah you are you you wear your heart heart out on your sleeve and I think it's just it's it's super inspiring uh you you won obviously congratulations for being thank you the Netflix champ I just the champion re, I just uh, I I've watched it a few times now, but I rewatched it this morning with my girlfriend, and she had a friend over, and both of them even said like she steals the show, like uh -huh. but it's but it's yes, you know a lot of time with reality TV people try to to be the show yeah and try too hard and you can see right through it. What I loved about you is you you just you were just like I wear my heart out on my sleeve that <laughs> I'm an incredible chef. And I'm a lover and you, what you see is what you get. And, and I love you know, to cook food and I love to blend my heritage into everything. Yes. You know, just throw it in there. I don't like like one, you know, solid. This is all it is. I think that's why I won because uh, some people were upset that someone else didn't win, but I didn't like stay in one lane. Yeah. You know, I tried to throw, yes, you know, I'm a Southern girl. Yeah. I'm going to throw something in there with it, but. You know, I did like Asian pork ribs and, you know, I did the the kind of the, the herbs to province type flavor beef mm -hmm. ribs that were, you know, very different. You know, I did, you know, macaroni and cheese, but then I did chowder. You know, I did, you know, I tried to to play the game. I guess that's what reality food is. You know, reality shows are by doing different things yeah. and not just staying kind of in one flavor profile was it the, um, the that's the only it, reason i can figure you know i won yeah was it uh was it ritz crackers that you put in the mac and cheese as the crust yeah is that what it was yeah is it, <laughs> had you had you had done that before oh yeah i mean a lot of people in the south use ritz crackers on the top of different things i've even used it on top of stuff lobster tails Ooh. oh that actually sounds that really sounds good delicious. yeah you yeah. mix it with some of my seasoning the crumbled up ritz crackers yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds so like, good. And, you know, you can mix it with butter, make it like yes. a crumble. 
and then put it on top because you know lobster takes what five minutes in the broil to cook so yeah mm -hmm. so you put the seasoning on top before you broil it no, no i mix it in with oh, the wrist cracker the, crumbs the and the cracker, butter put it and on you top. Make, it's almost like a like when you're making a, a crumble of bread you know yeah. for yeah, dessert yeah. and you just put it on top yeah Oh, that sounds amazing. Broil it, but on the lower level so it doesn't burn or bake it really hot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When you're when you're doing a, a competition like that and stuff, going into the actual day of the competition, do you know kind of at least somewhat what you have an idea of what you want to make or not? Like, how do you pull out against some of these crazy profiles, some of these crazy dishes just out of yeah. All so many different things out of nowhere. You don't have a recipe in front of you or anything, <laughs> yeah. you know? And it's like, so where does where does that come from? <laughs> you know if you know flavors if you know flavors you kind of know what will go together yeah and i think that's why you're like even at meals on wheels we know i can go in tomorrow and i do know because i went in yesterday but uh what what i have to cook because all of ours is donations food bank and you never you never know what it's going to be and then, yeah. I mean, and you still have to feed, you know, hundreds of people every day. So I think, um, I think actually doing that at Meals on Wheels actually helped me on the show because really? I have to do it every day. Now, yeah. granted, very different product lines that yeah, we yeah. had really high end meat on that show, you know, and the best of the best of every ingredient. Yeah. Um, but I just applied that, you know, I do that in my own pantry. I'm like, oh, I've had this in here for a year. I need to make something out of it, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> that's you, just uh... that's the way I've always been. I just come up with stuff. And I like to mix, you know, Chinese food with, you know, Mexican food or, you know, Cuban food with French food, you know. <laughs> I just mix it all up because you... I, I know the flavors. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you, uh, are you chefing at home for the family a lot? Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah. when uh, I mean, I cook. If if my husband is in town, we I cook every day. I will come home from meals on wheels after cooking. Lord knows how many meals, and we'll cook something. Did your inspiration for becoming the the chef that you are now come from your parents, or where where is the the inspiration? You know, I think it's a mixture of, of a couple things. My mom always cooked and was a great cook, but she's a traditional Southern cook. Yeah. And my grandfather raised five children, traditional Southern cook. And he'd let me stand up on a stool next to him and all that. And I love that. And my dad, he's passed, but he liked to eat very, at the time, unusual food. On the yeah. south side of Atlanta, where I live, we, don't, we didn't have a lot of ethnic restaurants. So we'd drive way to the other side of town. And he would always want to try these different things. So yeah. I loved that. And if it, we fixed anything you know, out of the realm of traditional Southern, my dad would cook it. Like he'd make fried rice and stuff like that, you know? So, uh, and he cooked on the grill, but terribly, uh, he had a gas grill and burned everything. I think to this day, I love like a lot of char because I grew up. That's all I ever had <laughs> stuff that was too done. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think it's a conglomerate of going out and seeing and eating these types of foods. Cause my mom was a Southern cook. And then my grandfather seeing how he raised five kids alone. Yeah. Cooking for them. And he was quite a good cook. And then my great aunt was, you know, uh, a great cook. And, you know, my other aunt is a great, I mean, everybody are really, really good cooks, but most of them are, I would say traditional Southern. The only thing yeah. I'm not real proficient in is desserts. I got a handful uh, that, but you know, you I'm that pretty cobbler. good at. They love the cobbler you made on the show. Yeah. Did I, I've had that recipe on my website. Did you know that? No, no. Now that is my grandfather and my mom's recipe. If you go watch the video on the website, my That's mom awesome. was here and had no idea that film crew was filming it. She just <laughs> thought they were setting up. And you can tell she's open in the fridge and she looks. And I think at that point she realizes she was being filmed. <laughs> this is just her. I mean, it's, they left it in, which it was so funny. We were actually here filming some demo videos so she just happened to be here said mom let's make this cobbler and mm -hmm. we can you know right. set that's it up on the table first. make it she had no idea so oh that's awesome it, so, well, it was kind of cool or not my texture is better 
Mmm, it's not. Mmm, yummy. Where did your true love for barbecue really come into <laughs> yeah. play? And then, you know, where did you learn how to become the queen of barbecue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was kind of a, a an accidental thing. Um, you know, I like to grill because I love to be outside. I mean, if it was not cold outside, I'd be sitting outside talking to you. Um, was, you know, I think maybe Girl Scouts, you know, cooking over the fire. You know, we didn't get to do that and the boys did. So I offered to do dishes to go over to help cook. <laughs> I think I think that kind of thing and just liking to be outside and competition. But you know, I was cooking at my house, and I've said this on every interview because people don't believe this, but it's true. Um, and we had a roofing company fixing our roof after a terrible storm. And I thought, well, I'm going to cook for all these. There was like a dozen people there, you know. And I, I said, well, I'll cook for them. So I had a little <laughs> smoker that we got on points, you know. Yeah. And I made like beef ribs one day, and I made chicken one day ribs, you know, because they were there for three days you're getting it done mm -hmm. and um the owner or the superintendent came by to get his money you know for the the roof thing and uh so I, of course i invited him to eat with us you know had a table set up in the garage and everything <laughs> and i said we'll just come on and eat and he looks at my husband and says well this is darn good barbecue <laughs> 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 I was like, and, and he said that a couple of times. And my, my husband said, well, she cooked it each time. And he, and then finally he says, you know, I got something in my truck for you. And he went out, not for me, still talking to my husband because, you know, I didn't exist. I was there to do dishes, I guess. <laughs> and he brought an application and gave it to my husband, of course. And it was for a barbecue competition. Yeah. And uh, I filled it out and we went and I won. <sighs> First of so the first one you went to, you won. No yeah. way. But what was funny is I had no idea that we had to cook all you know, different meats at one time. I thought, you know, you just cook something and they taste. No. So we had to buy a pop-up tent because it rained at one of the big boxers. And we had to buy another smoker because I thought, oh, my God, I got to fix lots of meat. Not <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. That's and I such placed a cool first story. in pork. And pork is kind of my thing. That's what I do best in. And uh, I placed first in pork there. No and my way. mom was there to see my first contest. No, what year was this? I think 2010 or the, I think 2010. That, that recent. Oh my goodness. So it's That's been not like, recent, 2010. It was 10 years, 12 years ago now, I guess. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, from there just to shoot up like you have like that's a that's a quick trajectory that's very Im impressive really i thought it's been a long slow road <laughs> yeah. that's a, a lot, lot of wins for a long slow road so you're talking like <laughs> it's been like a slow cook at like 220 then maybe for you <laughs> <laughs> really slow <laughs> yeah. i love it well tina i know i know you don't have that much time um i have i have one more question for you before we go um if you had an autobiography written about your life today what would the title be you know i'm not biblical <laughs> but they do unto others as you would have them do unto you oh i love that that's deep yeah that and works. i don't mean it in the biblical sense just in general you know just just be nice yeah you know it it takes nothing to be nice it takes more effort to be a but than just to be nice. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I try to tell Alec all the time. Because he yeah, continues I can tell to be a he's butt. A hard one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always just the butt of the joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> for the hour for the like the hour and a half that he came over before this interview to prepare the lobster and it took you an it. hour and a half? No, not no. to no, not to prepare the but he just came over early. To oh, hang okay. Because I'm like, Lord, y'all. Tina, all he did, <laughs> I'm a victim right now. All he did was make fun of me for hurting my wrist last night. You know, we all love to laugh at people when they get hurt, right? That's right. That's, that's exactly what she 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 gets me. She gets me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chef Tina Cannon, the queen of barbecue, the one of the biggest 
biggest barbecue chefs in the world. The biggest, in or the if world. the arguably Woo. the biggest barbecue chef in the world, with more importantly the biggest heart. This is her the seasoning. One hundred percent of the profits go to Meals on Wheels. Get it on her website. Also, the shirt that you see her wearing right now. Can we all just have a glass of tea? 100% of the profits go to Meals on Wheels. You're looking at one of the most love-driven philanthropists you could ever meet in the world, and she just happens to be one of the most successful chefs in the world. That's Tina Cannon. Tina, we love you. Thank you for joining us on Rock Woo, Tina! Now let's eat again. Hey, guys. I know we got kicked out of the bar. They called last call, but we're back. And I just want to let you know, we appreciate you guys so much. Our fan base means everything to us. So if you can, hit the like button, subscribe right here, and hit us up on Instagram, socials, everything. Lobster and Beer TV, we love you. We will see you on the next episode. Peace!